Welcome to the Wake Up Podcast. I am so excited that you're here. Listen, these podcasts are best listened to in the morning because we are waking up not only our bodies from sleeping, but we're waking up our minds, we're waking up our focus, we're waking up our calling, and we are following the breadcrumbs that God has left for us throughout the day over our life to tell us exactly what to do next. So stop saying that you don't know what to do, stop feeling overwhelmed. Stop living in the valley and start walking into your calling. So I'm so excited you're here. Welcome to the show. But honestly, there is so much to learn about Instagram. And there is so much to learn about a brand. And there is so much to figure out about who you are and why you are here and the mission God has for you. And it's overwhelming. Like, I'm not going to downplay that. I'm not going to say it's not. It's overwhelming. And I think the biggest reason why it's overwhelming, though, is because we're impatient. And because we want things our way. And we want them to happen now. And so if you can learn to just become patient and not be so impatient and just realize that, and I changed the background on my laptop. It's this quote. It says at the bottom, you are exactly where you're supposed to be right now. And I have put that down there because I needed to see it over and over and over. I'm a visual person. There's a lot I've been learning in the Bible about our eyes, which is just so cool that they're the lamp to your soul, that they are, if one eye does you wrong, pluck it out. Literally pluck it out is what it says. And it's, you know, they're not saying really like, oh, you know, you look at a a person and you lust after them, like gouge your eye out, but your eye is the gateway to your heart. And what you see is what goes into your heart. So a man sees a woman and my husband just got rid of Instagram recently because this was something that we were noticing in our home. And as we're raising our boys that are 12 and a half, we're trying to raise them of men of God, not men of the world. And we're trying to raise them to do what God wants them to do, not what the world says to do. All their friends have social media. All their friends have Instagram. All their friends just have free range and just do whatever their parents trust them. I don't trust the devil. And that's what I've had to tell my kids. It's not you. It's not you, babe. I trust you. It's the devil. He is after you and you are not strong enough to fend off the devil. So I will be here helping fight him for your life. And you can thank me for it later. And they know that. I even told them like last year when I threatened, I said, I will quit my job before I let the devil take you down. And I wasn't, I wasn't serious. I was like, okay, I'm not really going to quit my job. Like, this is my job. I'm a workaholic. This is like who I am. And then funny how a year later I quit my job and God's like, "Ah, jokes on you. (laughs) <laughs> switching around but we are in a battle with our children we're we're there instagram uh you know is is filled with all kinds of people all kinds of stuff and instagram can tell when you're scrolling if you're literally just like scrolling like this and then you go and scroll again like for like a half a second you're like oh what's that scroll instagram's like oh show them more of that stuff so as a man scrolling on Instagram, you see a hot girl. I mean, I look at hot girls on Instagram. Like I'm not, I'm like, dang, like, look at her butt. It's so tight. It's so good. Like, look at her curves, look at her boobs. Like, you know, even we look at people. So we're looking like, dang, that's like goals. I want to look like that. She looks awesome. But men are looking at that too, just because they're married, even if they're madly madly head over heels deep madly in love with their wife would never cheat would never do anything you're still looking you still see it you still look like you do you can't not look it is hard and so my husband and I were talking about this and teaching my boys I I got them they weren't on they were allowed to have certain social medias we monitored it all we said "Uh uh-uh absolutely not and like you know that reel that's like "Uh -uh, uh uh-uh uh-uh like that one I literally wanted to make that and I saved it because I want to do that because I'm like "Uh -uh uh-uh-uh like just because the world says 
that TikTok is okay for kids doesn't mean that it is. Monitor your kids' stuff and look at it. An, um, an app that you can download on all of your devices, whoever needs to hear this, I'm not getting paid to say this. I love this company. We have used them for the last year. It's called Ever Accountable. And you can put it on tablets, cell phones, computers, put it all. Tell them you're putting it on there because it's an app for accountability. It's not supposed to block where you can't access the sites. What it does is if you access the sites, if you Google certain words, even if you go on Instagram and type in girls' names who are connected to other things, it will flag it. And it'll say a name was searched on Instagram. And then when I clicked on it and looked, I was like, oh, how funny. She's a Playboy model. And I found my son was looking at stuff like that. And we're like, no. But then when we opened up and started talking to people about it at church and in our circles, it, everyone was like, oh, yeah, we, yeah, we, we found our son doing that. Or uh, they didn't have any kind of monitor on there. And they're like, oh, no, not my son. I'm like, okay. If it's not now, it will be because the devil is after our kids. The devil is after our spouses. He's trying to rip apart our marriage. He's trying to rip apart our families. He's trying to literally fight your kids because he's like, I want your kid in my kingdom. And he's, he's winning with a lot. He hasn't won and he will not win if we wake up and we see this, but motherhood has been so hard on my heart lately because being distracted in the world and being a person who was a workaholic and wanted more and wanted something big and want just wanted to have this incredible drive to do something. I realized that the person who was hurt the most during this whole thing were my kids because I'm like, who, who has raised you over the last 12 years? Like for real, like I really had to think like, you were being raised by the world for the last 12 years because I've been busy. I'm trying to be successful. I'm trying to be out there working. I'm, and this isn't a diss on anyone who has a job. Obviously, we need jobs. We need to provide for our family. There's a difference from working and providing versus trying to overachieve and workaholic and drown yourself in work and reach for work every single second you can. Total difference. But Ever Accountable is so good because it helps hold your children accountable so that they know I can't go to this site because my mom's phone will go off. And they're phenomenal at the stuff. It also will randomly take a screenshot of whatever they're on. It'll be kind of blurry, but it'll send it to you too randomly. And so you can see what they're doing. Uh, it's like $99 for the year and you can put it on as many devices as you want. So very good. If you have kids with social media, if you have kids that have phones, 100%. My biggest parenting tip is put this on there immediately. If you don't have kids, go tell someone who does have kids. Hey, I found this software. You should put this on there because it's up to us to do that. Our eyes are so important. If our kids start to see things through their eyes, they start to see this. Not only is it half naked women on Instagram and TikTok that I'm worried about, but I'm worried about all the videos that they see where it's look at my Lambo, look at my new hurricane look at my range rover look at my five million dollar house look at this look at this look at the and then the girls it's like look at this plastic surgery look at this perfect body look at this perfect filter look at this perfect everything looks perfect and awesome and that's not life that's not life like literally that's not life um we were talking about uh we were talking about cellulite my husband and I were talking about cellulite the other day I was like look at this look at the back of my leg like this I need to just tone this because this needs to go away. And he's like, yeah, how come like, how come some people don't have it? And I was like, well, mine is because I have a big butt and big thighs. So I'm like, I, this is why it is like, this is how it is. And he's like, uh, he's like, well, what about like the Kardashians? Like they do too. And do they have that? I was like, yes, they have that. He's like, well, I don't think they do. Like, I've never seen that in like pictures and stuff. They do photo shoots. I'm like, what do you think they do in photo shoots? They edit out their cellulite. You think that their skin really looks like that? If you have a big butt, you will have dimples on your butt. Like, you, like that's literally why you have a big butt is because of muscle and fat. Like it's impossible to not have. And so I'm like, wake up. Like, yes, 
And he's like, oh, really? I'm like, majority of women in the world have this, like have cellulite, majority of the women in the world, but Instagram and what people show you is that they don't look at my perfect skin. Look at this perfect filter. Look at how cute I look in this angle. Look at how clean my house looks. Look at how happy we all look. Look how put together I am. But that's what everyone sees. So you're, you're comparing your moment of just scrolling. You haven't showered in two days. You, you know, aren't airbrushing your skin. You're going through this, you're seeing, and you're just like, oh, I feel so bad about myself. So now you're like insecure. Um, so I start to follow. It is absolutely devastating. Um, Tracy says, my niece at 14 was chatting with a boy on an app. Ooh, this is a good conversation. This boy convinced her to send pics of her butt in a thong and her in a bra. And he sent her pics of himself from the waist down naked. My brother looked through her phone and found it. After digging deep into it, he found out this guy was really 35. Does not surprise me at all. At all. And that's the kind of stuff that needs to be just blocked from our kids even having access to do things like that because they can't decipher what's good and what's bad and what's right. And they're not thinking that this is a 35. They're like, this boy likes me. Oh my gosh. I was the girl. I literally have sent my, I have sent my body in pictures to men before I was married. Like I was that girl. I did that because, because if I can show someone a picture and they're like, dang, like, I want you. You're incredible. I can't wait to be with you. I can't wait to see you. You know how good that feels to a girl who's insecure and has no self-worth? Like, yup. Okay. I have a boyfriend. He's from up North. Like, you know, you just start feeling like you start feeling good about yourself. And I don't want my girls to do that. Not like, do I want them to do the action? I don't want them to even I want them to be like, ew, I would never do that. I would never send you a picture. Do you know how worth, how worthy I am? Do you know how special I am? I'm not going to show myself to you. Ew. Like I'm the daughter of the highest king. Get away from me, peasant. <laughs> get out of here. You don't get to see this. You know, but it's, it's so true. Oh gosh, what did April say? I try not to use a filter. I feel like it's more relatable, but of course, sometimes I need to use it. It's actually a favor to my followers. I get it. I use filters too. For like three reels, I didn't use a filter. And I was like, okay, like this is good. And then I was like, okay, I need to use filter. <laughs> I can't do this. But, you know, I'm not saying filters are terrible and you're inauthentic. Although studies show that, creators who don't use a filter on their content actually have more followers, more engagement. Their insights are more in the green than people who use filters. And even if you think like, oh, this filter is like barely changing how I look. Like, it's just like the one filter I use. I'm like, this is just like brightening it really. It's just like a brightener. <laughs> and it's like, but, but it's not like people can see that it's not authentically you. And pay attention as you're scrolling next time and you see someone, like I follow a couple of people who use like really heavy filters, like filters where I'm like, that doesn't even look like you. Like you're like bright orange and your eyes are like neon blue. Like, oh, like this, is, this doesn't look like a human. Like even people who use that, like think about when you're hearing their content or you're hearing them give advice or say things, how you take that advice internally when you start seeing their stuff. Just think about it because that's exactly what's happening when you're being inauthentic and you're trying. So um, I intentionally follow people on Instagram that are going to make me feel amazing. And this has been about a year and a half journey of doing this since I've been like, okay, I'm not going to worry about what other people think. You know, when I hit my deepest pit of my valley and I was just like, enough is enough. Something has to change. I didn't delete Instagram. I didn't delete social media. But what I did is I started unfollowing and hiding people on different platforms. And I started seeking out and following and, and clicking on see first on Facebook or clicking on close friends on Instagram. And I made my feed what I wanted it to be. What's so great is that in April and Alicia, I was thinking about you guys. I was thinking about this last night. I was talking to my mom about it. So if you guys didn't see in our Telegram chat, April and Alicia both had their Instagram accounts gone, like wiped, you're done, this is gone forever, goodbye, you're on your own. 
which that's a whole message in itself. And there's a lot we can talk about there. Kudos to both of these women that are like, whatever, obviously it's God's plan. He must have made, wanted me to start a new account. I also think that it's, it's um, ironic, you know, nothing is coincidental or ironic. It's God putting it all together, but both of them have been talking about starting a new Instagram account for a very long time, like a very long time. Like it was that like internal, like I remember April when you're like, I don't know, something just keeps telling me like start a new account. I just feel it like deep in my soul, start a new account, start a new account, start a new account. And she's been talking about this for like a year and a half. And so I just think that it's so commendable that both of you have so much trust that you're like, whatever, like, I'm not going to stress about it and it's going to work out and it's going to change. But I was thinking what a great opportunity it is for you to start over, not only with your own content, your own brand and all of that, but to have a fresh account, to be able to put people on it that you want to see that builds you up, that make you feel better. Because there's still a lot of people that we all follow that we shouldn't, but we do because you can't catch everyone. Um, it does feel bad, I'm sure, going from 5,500 followers to zero. <laughs> uh, and she says, I don't need verification from anyone but God. And we all like look for that blue check mark, like, oh, they're verified. They must be good. But we have already been verified in God. And I love that, that you even say that. Um, but okay. It's a great time to start over and to put your people on your newsfeed that you want to see that are going to ignite your soul and create passion and create excitement for you, not extinguish it because every post you see is either pouring gas or they're smothering it inside your soul. That's what's happening really all day long. We have like a little tiny light that's burning inside of our furnace and it's just on very lightly. And then what you start doing throughout the day will like blow it up or it'll put it up. You like wake up, start scrolling Instagram immediately, start comparing yourself, start to stress about your day. Oh my gosh, I have all this stuff. I forgot those bills are due. Oh, I'm so behind. I have so much stuff. Look at all this laundry that now the kids don't have anything to wear and they're hungry and you didn't go grocery shopping. And now you got to go grocery shopping, but you don't have money and you have to wait till Friday. And so you just start spinning. And now it's just like, you're stressed, you're annoyed. Your kids say something, you snap. Your boss says something, you snap. You're in a bad mood. You're irritated with your husband. And then like everything just starts to go crazy. And when you're in that kind of mindset, you're nowhere near nowhere near creation mode, like nowhere near. You are so far from creating that you can't even sit down at a certain time and force yourself to do work for your own business, your own mission. You can't sit down for my branding course and say, all right, here we go. I'm going to do this from four to six today. I'm going to sit down and do this. You're not going to have the answers. You're not going to be able to answer the questions. You're not going to be able to come up with the ideas because your mind has a helmet protecting the creativity because you're not in a, in a mode to create. You are not in that mental space. And so that's why one of the best things that you can do for yourself, if you feel like, why am I not moving forward in my business? Why am I stuck? Why am I at a standstill? I don't care what business you're in, any business. If you just feel like you're stuck, there's a wall. Why am I not busting past this wall? Why am I not moving forward? The reason is is the best thing that you can do is slow down. Like start canceling things. Sorry, I can't come anymore. Sorry, I can't do that. Literally, you can do that. You're choosing your own mental health over everything else. So it's okay to cancel plans. It's okay to back out if it's causing your mental health and it's a bad boundary that you're now realizing like, uh, uh, nope, I'm not doing this anymore and slow down. You need to spend more time in the word, spend more time, um, putting good things into your mind, spend more time putting good things in front of your eyes on Instagram, like if your account and your newsfeed is all positivity and goodness, like every single thing on my Instagram is about God. 
I like every single thing. I don't even get ads anymore for things that aren't God. Everything is about God. It's about putting yourself straight. It's a sermon. It's inspiration. It's a scripture. It's a quote. It's, it is amazing. Now when I go on Instagram, I feel so full. I feel so excited. I feel so brought to life because I'm not comparing. I'm not looking at things I shouldn't. It's all there. But Terry, did you buy this for me? Did you buy this? Um, this soul care was this from you? Okay. I thought so. But then I was like, I don't want to just say it. And then she's like, what? Okay. So Terry sent me this beautiful gift. I love, love, love this little book. It's so cute. A manifesto book, but it's written on this um, bookmark. And I read it yesterday when I was cleaning out my office and I stuck it on the side because I loved it. And it says soul care. I believe soul care means silencing the noise, hearing the whispers of my own soul, tending to my body with care and nourishing the inner landscape of my heart. I promise to acknowledge the wisdom that resides within honoring my highest, wisest self with kindness, integrity, and trust. The majority of women do not do this. They do not. They don't trust themselves. They don't love themselves. They're not kind to themselves in any way. I mean, do you hear your thoughts throughout the day of yourself? Especially now it's starting to get warm. We put on less clothes. You're like, oh, I wish it was winter. <laughs> I love wearing hoodies and sweatpants more than anything. <laughs> like anything. I am not a girl that could live in the Florida sun because I need sweatpants and hoodies. And we start to say things. Oh my gosh, I'm so gross. I was so lazy this winter. I can't believe I just ate like that. I'm just, yep, here we go. I ate like crap. So of course I look like crap and I feel like crap. I really need to go to the gym. I should be working out. I should be drinking more water. And then like Tony Robbins says, you should all over yourself. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. I should be working out. I should work out more. I should call a trainer. I should make more money. I should. And then, okay, if you are trying to honor your highest, wisest self with kindness, integrity, and trust, the beginning part is what I love so much because you need to silence the noise. That's something that I, that's a symptom of the valley, by the way, um, is just this noise in your head. It's so loud in your head and it can be dead silent in your house. And it's so loud in your head. So many thoughts, like you're not even completing a thought before another thought is there and another thought. And they're usually like worries and fears and insecurities. And you're just, and then it's like your to-do list and, oh my gosh, and I'm falling behind and any kind of like confrontation you start thinking of and any decisions you need to make. And it's just so loud. You're, you have all these different voices. You have God's, you have your, your own, you have the devil's voice where you're trying to be like, is this God or is this the devil? Is this a trick or is this a blessing? Is this, and you just have no idea. <laughs> like, and it's so loud. I just, I said that it was like the white noise, like that white noise sound, you know, on an old TV. I say old TV. Cause you know, they don't make that sound anymore. <laughs> it just is like a blue screen. Thank God. Somebody did that by the way, whoever was like, can we just like mute this noise? Do we have to have this noise when something's not connected? <laughs> like what an awful noise, but that noise just blaring as loud as you can. And then everyone in my house is screaming as loud as they can at me at the same time. That's what I felt like I was living in. I felt like there was pressure closing around my chest. I couldn't breathe. I would be like, I just need to go outside. But, and there were many times where I had to just go outside and my husband would know, thank God he was with me during this because it was such a hard time for me because I couldn't explain it. I couldn't make sense of it. I, I, could, I couldn't put it into words how I was feeling besides, I just can't do this anymore. And that's all I would say. I just can't do this anymore. And I would cry and bawl my eyes out. And he'd be like, just what is wrong? And all I could say is, I just can't do this anymore. And he'd be like, what is this? This, this, everything, like everything. I can't do this. I cannot do this. And I, in that moment, and I said it to so many people, I 100% understand why some moms leave their family and never come back. I understand it. I used to be like, how could they do that? What kind of mother 
could leave her children? What kind of mother could walk away from their child? What kind of father could walk away from their child? My biological father walked away from me and abandoned me. And I would be like, how could he do that? How could you do that? Nobody could ever take away my kids. I would kidnap my own kids and like smuggle them to an island before I gave them up. Like I would do it. But you know what? When you're mentally not well, you'll do all kinds of things that you never thought you would do. And I totally get why people just say, you know what? I'm done. I'm done packing my bag, leave it in the middle of the night. Because I was so close to doing that. That sounded amazing. It's hard when you're down in the valley and the noise is so loud. What happens when, no when the noise is loud, you can't hear the whispers of your own soul. And those whispers of your soul are, start a new Instagram account. And you're like, I think I'm going to start a new Instagram account. But what happens immediately after it's like, oh no, that probably won't work. And I'm going to start all over. And then I'm, I have 15, 5,500 followers now. And I'm going to have zero. Like what kind of validation is that? Like, okay, I'm not starting over. Like that's stupid. Most people don't start over. Like I just need to keep moving. I'll think about this later. Okay, we'll just keep going. And you deny yourself. You deny that whisper. You deny that thought because of fear, rejection, comparison, all of those things come into play. But why I love journaling so much is what I shared with you guys last night of the journal entry I found where over two years ago, I just made a little list of four things that I wanted to start doing. And it was like, write a book. I don't remember what they were now. Write a book, um, start a clothing line, branding course. It were all these things. And I'm like, I thought of that over two years ago. But when I found an old journal entry from when I was in 11th grade, I wrote, and I want to share that one with you guys. I have to get it. It's in a box upstairs. But I talk about writing my book. I'm like, one day I'm going to write a book. And like, I was in 11th grade and I haven't written it yet because of fear, comparison. I'm not enough. This isn't going to work. I don't even know how to do this. How am I going to start this? So we have these whispers in our souls, but we either one, reject them immediately. We don't realize it's rejection. It's very slow. It's very subtle. I told my husband last night, I'm really good at tricking myself like really good at tricking myself. Like, I'll be like, no, we're not like, because like my flesh wants to just work, 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 work. Like we're working 24 seven. We're working, working, working. That's not what we need to do. So I very easily like deceive myself and like trick myself into doing that where I'm like, this isn't really work. Like I'm designing stuff for the church. Like this isn't, this isn't work. This is fun. Like, look how great this is. And then I'm like, oh, this is, this is making an impact. I'm doing God's work. I'm doing the Lord's work. Like I can do this. And then all of a sudden I realized last night that I've been saying yes to everything and I'm starting to really get burnt out again. I'm starting to really wear myself thin. And my husband is like, why do you do this to yourself? And I just like leaned over into him in the bed. And I was like, I know, imagine living in my brain. Like, I don't want to be like this. I hate being like this. Like, help me, like, well, like, get me out of here. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know, babe. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> he's like, I just, I feel like it's exhausting being you. I'm like, thank you. I'm glad somebody understands. Like what happens in my head is so exhausting. It's so hard. He's like, you just make things so hard for yourself. Like you overcommit and you just, you say yes to everything. And then you second guess yourself and you say yes before you pray and think about it. You're impulsive and you just won't go too far too fast. He's like, we, you should get a tattoo that says zero to 100. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I will. <laughs> just a little reminder. And then the other one that says like a hundred to zero. <laughs> I could be like, okay. But I, I joke around and I say like, I hate that I'm this way. And there are a lot of things that I'm trying to work on but I used to hate myself. I used to hate how I operated. I used to hate how I worked. And now I love it. And now I'm like, it's me. It's just, that's who I am. I talk too much. I, uh, and which is funny. Cause I'm like, oh, okay. If you have the gift of talking and you like to talk and you like to talk a lot, why don't you do that for a living? Why don't you get paid to talk? Why don't you do it? Like, and then when I was like, you know what? I don't care. 
Like I, I talk too much. I go on tangents. I jump from thing to thing to thing. I'm all over the place. But you know what? When I loved it and I started showing up, all of a sudden I started attracting my people. All of a sudden, our Zoom calls in the morning grew. All of a sudden, the podcast listeners grew. All of a sudden, my followers started growing because people are connected to me who like me. People who don't like me don't watch my stuff. But people who do are like, oh, I like her. Like, just we're like connected. I feel like we're, we'd be like friends in real life. Do you ever say that about people? I'm like, if, if Vince Vaughn knew me in real life, he would want to be my best friend. I've always thought that. And Khloe Kardashian. Like I just, me and Chloe, I feel like we're just so similar and I really want her to meet me one day <laughs> because she doesn't know what she's missing out on. We would really connect, but do you do that? Do you see people online where you're like, oh yeah, they're my people. Like I, I would like to hang out with her. I would like to go on a trip with her. I would like to, you know, do something. Um, but the going back to, okay, being deceived in, the, in these white noise and this, this loudness in your head the only way to hear the whispers is to, um, or the only way to do them, you know, you're going to hear them. You have to act on them. So don't let fear squash them. But the other thing that can squash them is being distracted, you know, and you don't even hear it. You don't like that. There's no room that whisper. Okay. If there's a whisper, think of you, if your house right now, everyone was screaming, like, let's say you were having a party at your house and it was super loud. And it's like new year's Eve. It's like 10, nine, eight, and the ball's about to drop and everyone's so excited. Okay, this is like old New Year's for me because now New Year's, I'm usually sleeping by New Year's or I like roll over. I'm like, oh, it's 12.05, happy New Year. <laughs> you know, like you're not even awake at New Year's anymore uh, when the ball drops, but let's imagine it's so loud. And then you hear this whisper that tells you something like write a book. You can't hear that. And especially if you've been drinking, if you've been drinking, forget about it. And that's why the Bible says to be of a sober mind, because the devil prowls around like a lion waiting for someone to devour. He's not trying to get you to turn your back and jump on top of you and eat you up. He's just trying to distract you. He's just trying to get you to not hear. That's all he needs you to do is I need to shift her focus from listening to this whisper to looking at anything else. And I'm gonna use in her flesh what she wants, what she desires, what he wants, what he desires to get him off course, to get him from doing this. So he puts all kinds of stuff in our path, including what we're working so hard for, this drive, this, I need to be more, I need to really, for me, this like incredible sense of, I need to get to the top of my company. I need to be a million dollar earner. I need to do this all stemmed from insecurities, approval of others, pride, people pleasing. That's it. When I thought about becoming a millionaire, I thought about all the things I was going to do to shove in people's faces who didn't believe in me. I was like, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm going to take all of your families to Disney and you won't have to pay for a single thing. And I'll be like, oh yeah, who paid for this? I paid for this. You're welcome. Thanks for not supporting my business. I, we even talked about getting this huge boat and I'm like, you know what? We're going to call it because when you buy a brand new boat, you get to name it. If you buy a used boat, it's bad luck to rename it, which whatever. I would rename it if I didn't like the name because I'm just a control freak and I couldn't have anything I didn't like like that. <laughs> so whatever. But I told, I told everyone, I even told people, this is so embarrassing. I, John and I were just talking about this the other day. I was like, I cannot believe I told people this. Like I would walk around, we would park our boats because we live in Michigan. So it's all fresh water. And in the summer, like that's all people do is go on the boat and you all meet up on the boat and tie up and your kids are out there and you go in like waist deep water so you can stand out there. And I would literally go to other people in my group and I would tell them this. And I'd be like, you know what we're gonna name our, our new boat that we buy next year? Okay, because I was like, it's happening next year. Like, we're going to have enough money. We're going to be millionaires. Of course, I can buy this boat. It's like $200,000, like no big deal. And so I would go and tell people that we're going to name the boat Pyramid Scheme. And I was in a network marketing company and everyone's like, oh, you're doing one of those pyramid things. And so I'm like, you know what? We're going to name the boat Pyramid Scheme. And so I went and like told everyone this and all that. And it was literally like, 
looking at myself now, since I've healed and I've grown, I now can look back at that former version of myself. Yeah, April, that's like what it is. Like, like, oh my gosh, like I'm so embarrassed. This is even who I was, but, but we all grow. And now I look back and I'm like, you were literally just walking around telling everyone you're insecure. <laughs> you were like, Hey, by the way, super insecure. Yeah. I'm super insecure. Okay. Hey, you guess what? Me really insecure. Yeah. I'm really insecure. So if you are just trying to prove something, if you're just trying to show something, God's not going to give you the dream. He's not going to help you to achieve the dream. If it's going to make you feel worse, if it's not even really what you want to do, like we think this, I remember being like, this is what I want. God, I promise this is what I want. I know that I know that I know that this is what I want. There is nothing else that I want. This is what we're going to accomplish together, or I'm just going to do it on my own because this is where I'm going to be. I, I don't need you. I just will not talk to you. I just will not pray to you. I'll just, you know, thank you for all you've done, but I'm going to take it from here because you're not helping me achieve my goal. So I'm just going to work really hard. I'm going to go find a mentor that will tell me what I want to hear. I will go find a group of people that will show me that it is possible to make money by hustling and working hard and sacrificing because I will do it in my own strength. And that is honest to God, my whole viewpoint while I was building my business. And I would go to church on Sundays and I would go to Bible studies on Wednesdays and I would say that I'm a Christian and I would talk about God here and there, but I was not listening. I was not living my life in accordance to what he said. And when I didn't get what I wanted, I did what I did my whole life where I'm like, mm, forget it. I don't need you. I'll do it myself because I've been the only person that I can count on my entire life. Every single person has let me down or has limited me or has tried to control me. So I'm like, no more. I'll do what I want. But we serve a patient, amazing, grace-filled, merciful God when we're throwing little temper tantrums, like little kids, he's just like, okay, well, when you're ready, you know where to find me. I'll be here. Don't worry. I'll also still be working things in the background for you because I'm not going to totally just let you starve. Just like if your kid packs a bag and it's like, I'm running away. You're still going to make dinner for him that night. You're not like, oh, well, I guess we only have five now. Like, you know, you're still make dinner for him. You're still going to even if he disappeared for a day and he was at grandma's house or down the road, you're still going to keep his room up. You're, you're still going to clean his laundry. You're still going to do stuff because you know, like you're just being a child. You're just being immature. You just don't see it. So don't worry, honey, I'm still here helping you. And when you're ready, you'll come back home. And that's exactly what God does to us. And if you've rejected God, if you've told him off, if you told him, get out of my life, don't come over here anymore. If you just have anger towards God, if you have resentment, he did you wrong. You don't understand why good things happen. Uh, bad things happen to good people. Good things happen to bad people. Like what kind of world do we live in? One, it's okay. It's okay. God can take it. If my kid yells, I hate you. I'm like, well, I love you. And we'll talk when you're feeling better. It, it doesn't break me. I don't feel rejected. God can handle it. And he's still standing there waiting for you. I promise you he's waiting for you. I don't care if it's been 20 years that you've been rejecting him, that you've been turning away from him. I don't care what you said. I don't care what church you stopped going to, what bridges you've burned, where you are, what you've said, what you've done. You can always come back and be like, white flag. I surrender. Come get me. I really tried, but I couldn't. You can do that at any moment. And all it takes is for your heart, your heart. It's not your words. It's not your lips and your tongue forming words. It's what's in your heart. All you need to do is to talk to him about what your heart feels. I can't do this. I am exhausted. Help me. You're not even, you know, I saw this quote that said, um, you find God when you, when you no longer can even hide it anymore, 
that your life is falling apart. You know, because for a long time you hide it, especially social media. You know, I'll just, I'll just post on the days I feel good. I'll just show up when I look good. I'll just show up when I'm feeling good. I don't post pictures and reels and videos of myself when I'm laying in bed, isolating myself for three days because I'm depressed and I'm having a bad couple of mental health days. You know, we don't show that, which I want to. I always say that I want to, but when I'm in that mode, the last thing I want to do is even look at my phone. So when I think, oh, I should film this. I'm like, no, you're pathetic. We're not filming this. You know, so you don't, so it's hard, but it's your heart. It's how, it's how you feel inside. It's that I can't do this anymore. I need your help, but it's also being quiet and eliminating the noise so that you can hear when help is given. You guys having to start over on Instagram is, I mean, it sucks. It's awful. And my heart is broken for you. And it also scares the crap out of me. You know, you work for five, 10, 15, 20 years to build up an account. You get all these things and Instagram can just say, oh, goodbye. I I feel like legally we need to be protected. This has fired me up to, to, I have a, a lawyer friend online. She does like all, you can do a membership for her services. Um, Andrea Sager is her name. Shout out to Andrea. And I am going to message her and talk to her about this. Because if this is happening to you guys, how many other people is it happening to? And the fact that there's no phone number, there's no customer service, there's no nothing. It's just like, well, figure it out. You're on your own. It's happening to a lot of people. And it's insane. They can't do that. You literally Mm -hmm. cannot just silence people for what they've built and what they've created and what they've done, you cannot do that. You can't. And so like what I was telling April last night, I was like, I see this be a whole new beginning for you guys, not just because it's a new beginning of zero followers following zero, you know, a brand new beginning, like here we go. But I also see it as a brand new beginning because I feel like it's going to fuel by being authentic and showing people that your accounts were closed. I told, I told April yesterday, I was like, you need to start talking about this. Like I had an account with 5,500 followers. It was closed down. Help me be seen in front of Instagram, like demand justice for the people who else has this happened to comment below, like to start a riot, to start. I actually posted it on Facebook. I posted it on TikTok. Um, I posted it in my Instagram stories. Um, and I am, I am feeling like I want to talk about it. I also don't feel as devastated as I did initially, like that fear and, um, and just, you know, like you have that pit in your stomach and you're, you're just you just want to vomit because ev- everything that, you know, that you lost, but I don't feel that anymore. I'm just like, okay, here we go. Here we go. We're doing this again. I, and I know that it's, that it's not just us. It's happened to other people. And, um, and this isn't the first time that it's happened. I'm sure it's happened, you know, it's happened tons and tons of, and we've, we've heard about it happening. It's just, it, it hits close to home because it's us. Um, but I'm totally going to talk about it. I'm going to continue to talk about it. And I'm, I've asked like all of my, you know, like in my posts, I'm like, please share this, like share. And I'm seeing people share it. Like I'm seeing people put up in their stories. Like my son was like, this is my mom, you know, go follow her. This is uh, Instagram deleted her entire account. She, runs a small business on social media, like go follow her. And like people are, I had people in TikTok like messaging me. And so I and I would talk about. I would, because people love to help people. People love that. Like, oh, I'll follow her. Yeah, I want to help her get her business back up. I want to help her do this. Um, but I would even really capitalize, like as much as you're not really capitalized, but I guess turn into content things like that. Like when you get messages, when you get people that are showing up to show other people, like, I'm so glad people are caring about this too. Or if someone's like, like right now, like in this chat, I would take a picture of the part in this chat that says, 
um, that Tracy said my friend did too. She had 75,000 followers and poof gone. I would take a picture and be like, I'm not alone. Who else do you know? And share that. And so you're constantly showing and that's in any brand that you do. And that's actually what I was going to talk about today, which we didn't have time, but was talking about these things that you do when you, I love when I don't have time to talk about what I want to talk about because God is like, uh, you're going to talk about this. And then I'm like, dang it, I don't have time. Um, but I don't, and maybe this is why I didn't talk about it because God was like, no. For the people who are more advanced. So if you have a brand, if you're like, I know what I'm going to do. I've figured this out. I, I got it. I'm plugged in. I'm ready. Like that's, I found that at the very end of December, it was all perfectly clear. And I was like, this is it. Up until then, I went on this path and this roller coaster to try to figure out what my brand actually was going to be. Like, what was I going to teach? What was I going to talk about? What was I going to show up for? Who was I looking to attract? It was really hard. And you have to throw yourself out there. Okay. You just have to throw yourself out there and start doing stuff. You can't be like, okay, well, once I get it perfect, I'll show up because you won't know until you put yourself out there and you realize, nah, I don't want to do that anymore. Or I don't like talking about that. Or I don't like the results I'm getting. So I'm going to shift. You can't pivot and shift. If you have nothing to stand on, you have to like be there and say, here, I'm showing up and here we go. But once you do that and you're pivoting and you're going through, once you're like, oh my gosh, I've arrived. I want to help you do that. And the majority of people that we coach and in the morning and who do my course, they're all people that are either currently in the valley of my life is over and I just can't do this anymore. Or they're, they get out and then they're back in and they get out and they're back in and they get out and they're like, ah, like, can I just get out for good? And I promise you, there will be a day where you get out for good, where it doesn't matter your circumstances in your life, you will be out. Any, anything can happen. The world can fall. Everything can crumble. And you still don't feel like you're in the valley that comes from learning who God is trusting in God, trusting in yourself, loving yourself, co-creating your life with God that comes with all of that. But there are some people who have figured out their brand that are like, I know what my brand is and I'm showing up every day on social media and I'm trying to be seen and I have something I'm selling or I, I have a free offer and I, I'm getting emails. It's so important to build an email list because if your Instagram account gets terminated or Instagram goes down, like all social media platforms went down for two days over the last year, um, you're not left with a closed sign over your business and no customers anywhere. An email list is so important. And hearing your guys' story about your Instagrams being deactivated makes me realize it even more that we have to be getting emails. We have to be getting phone numbers. We have to be getting information of our people because we've worked this hard to impact them and to change their life, to just have them disappear and have no idea and nowhere to contact them. So I want to start talking more about the advanced side for people who have a brand for people, and it doesn't have to be a perfect brand, but you're like, I think I know what I'm doing. I'm showing up pretty often. I'm posting things because there's a lot of things that you need to be doing and paying attention to that can really help you blow up your business. And like one of them is what we just said about taking screenshots of what people are saying, if they're getting help from your page, if they're saying, oh yes, thank you so much for posting this, this hits home, so true, you're an inspiration. Like when people start coming to you and saying things like this, those are the things that you can take screenshots of and post and say like, I'm so glad I'm finding my people. I'm so glad, thank you guys for helping me in this mission. Thank you for caring about this like I do. Thank you for sharing your story boldly because now you're creating a community on your Instagram page where it's not just, oh, here's the Taryn show. And all we do is just, I just talk and give information. Instead, it's now you're seeing other people that are students from the course that are on the morning calls, 
that are friends of mine that we're connected to in business. Like now you start to see more and that's really what people want. People want to see your life. So if you're just posting what your brand is, like example, Alicia has a t-shirt business, well, really a clothing line, not just t-shirt business. And she's creating these shirts and she's showing. And the thing that Alicia did so great is that not only does she post the shirts that are for sale, but she also goes live and shows you how she's making them. And when she started doing it, and Alicia, you have to make sure you save your first live ever and save it because you're going to want to post it and show it in like five years or less and show like, look at what I did in the beginning because you're going to grow and change and your lighting's going to get different and your equipment's going to get bigger and your shop's going to change and your customer orders are going to change. And you're going to be able to be like, Oh my gosh, remember I was just doing this in my guest house. And I was doing this and now like, look how big it came. Look how, how much we've grown from this. So that was so great that you went live and showed people you creating and doing it. Not only are you teaching it, but you're showing people how you do it. And that's what people want to see. If you're showing up to inspire people to be who God created them to be, I don't only just post things and tell you scriptures and say things, but I also show you what it looks like to act that out. I want, and all the things that I show where I'm showing how I'm acting that out are the videos that I get the most engagement on. Like when I posted a, a video of me in my bed, reading my Bible and wrote about like, isn't this hard to, um, isn't it hard to wake up early in the morning and read your Bible every day? And I was like, yeah, it's super hard. Like, let me tell you my tips of what I do to be able to do that. And like that video was way more effective than me just saying, hey, here's three tips to get out of bed in the morning. Because people were like, oh, that's me. Yes. Okay, show me. So it's about like unlocking this creativity in your brain. Because if you don't have this creativity flowing through you, you won't be able to create the things. You won't be able to think outside of the box. And remember, I posted this yesterday in a reel, our number one biggest superpower is prayer. So if your ideas suck, maybe you should ask God to give you better ideas. I pray every day, give me outside of box ideas, ideas that are so good that I know they're not from me. Put them in my mind, put them in my head. And they will literally hit me where I'll be like, oh, hang on. I just got an idea. Like it literally, or sometimes I'll be like, hold on, it needs to download. I hold on. And I will like literally, and it will like come through and I'll be like, okay, this is what you need to do. But if you're living with the noise and it's loud and you can't hear the whispers and it's just so chaotic, you're not going to be creative. You're not going to be able to have outside of box ideas. You're not going to be able to have success because you can't even hear when God's answering your prayers. So the best thing you can do is stop and pray and start to listen to your soul and do things again. There's um, I'm creating a free offer and it's three things to do to make you feel better right now. And people are going to be able to subscribe to it. And it's going to be three emails they're going to get um, day one, day two, day three. And it's going to tell you my three things to do to feel better right now, because I've had it written down for so long. I even was going through my journal and it was the second coaching call I ever did with my coach. We created this whole thing. I was like, this is already all done. It's literally done in this notebook. I had no idea it was even done. Now all I have to do is just type it up. And so this is something I thought of years ago and I'm finally implementing it because instead of trying to just create new things and do new things, I'm going to go back and think, what did God already tell me? What has he already spoken over my life? What do I already know to be true? And I need to work on believing that. And then I need to work on those things. So God will also force us down his path. If he knows we're not going to listen, he'll just slam the door in our face. And maybe God wanted you to make a new Instagram account. Maybe it was coincidental, but God just slammed the door and he's like, and you're done new account. Oh, look, now she has to make a new account. We got her guys. She did it. 
all the angels around you are like, yay, she finally listened. <laughs> like she had to do it. Just like my job. Like God was telling me to quit my corporate job and I was such a chicken and I couldn't do it. And then all of a sudden my boss was like, pick because you're not doing both. Do this or do this. He forced me out. And in network marketing, when he told me to quit my network marketing career and I said, no, he started to force me out. It was a force. I was forced out. I, I was like a sliver that was literally pushed on all sides until I came out. And I just had a girl message me yesterday and say, I'm really curious. Like, how did you know God was telling you to leave the industry? I'm like, because he forced me out of it. I wanted to stay. I was like hanging on to every last string and he's like, cut, 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 like, nope, sorry, and forced me out. So sometimes God will do that. And so how incredible this is going to be. April said today her account, her new account's already growing faster than her old account was. Remember, it's not about how many followers you have. It's about how many followers are your ideal people. And it's how many people want to follow you and want to see what you're doing, not just forced to do it. So this is going to be incredible. I would highly recommend you girls to take screenshots of your profile, like a lot. So you can see how it grows, pay attention to your insights, not your final numbers. If your insights are in the green, you're doing something good. Don't focus on that number, focus on insights and focus on just being authentic and posting things that you naturally are like, I'm going to make a post about that. That's how it starts. So I'm proud of you guys for your mindset. That isn't easy. And most people I know would be like crying on the floor, me included, like my life is over. It's all over forever. And it's maybe do some reels like that where you're like, you know, showing people like, you know, but when you have the right mindset, like, here we go. This account's going to be even better. Look at coach Mike on Instagram who grew to a million in one year, one year, a million. He started a brand new account, 1 million in a year. So claim that over your account. Here we go. April, whatever. Was it April 1st? <laughs> it was deactivated. What if they came back and they're like, April fools, it's back. We just wanted to mess with you a little bit. It was April 1st for real. Oh my gosh. That is it started on April 1st, but I was totally locked out by my birthday. Oh, like they said 24 hours and I'll have it back. And then like it was my birthday, April 3rd, and it still wasn't up. I was like, whatever, I need to be on Instagram. So I need to build this other account because I'm like, I miss my people. Like, like. I don't know. You know how you just have some friends on Instagram. Maybe you just always connect with them. You always like their stuff. They always like yours. And I can like see their names, but I can't remember like the spelling of them. So I'm like trying so hard to remember who they are. So that's what I was asking in my, in my, um, one of my posts, I'm like, please share this so I can find my people. Melanie put in the chat just now, I'll be your people. <laughs> And that's like, right. That's it. Like showing up. I love that. Like that. You said that at the bottom of your posts, like I'm looking for my people. That's what I'm doing. I hear, here we go. I'm looking for my people because people who are your people are like, Oh yeah. I like her. You could also you eating the sucker right now. I feel like you could be like, just start like doing lives and be real and like have a sucker in your mouth, <laughs> and like talk to people. And you're the girl that always has a sucker in her mouth. You said that. You with like the sucker in your mouth is like, I just keep like watching you. It's like mesmerizing. Really? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just kept like looking at you, know. you like, I don't know, made you look cute too. I felt, felt like it was like baby spice from the Spice Girls. <laughs> you can put your hair in braids. She did always have a <laughs> Okay. I love you guys. Thanks for being you. Thanks for showing up. Thank you for chiming in. Um, I will send the information of Ever Accountable in the Telegram chat. If you're listening to the recording and you ever want to join us live to chat with everyone or to just join the Telegram chat that we're in where we share um, just different resources and things we talk about, you can click the link in my bio on Instagram and you can click to join us live and you'll get an email with all that information in there so that you don't have to feel alone. Find your people, find your community. You cannot do this alone. You can't, you have to be around your own people. So 
thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. It's such a privilege, privilege to be able to talk to you guys. And I'm grateful that God allows me to do it. I'll see you on Friday. So come back. Have a great week. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Okay. Love you. Bye. Thank you for listening and spending your morning with me. I pray that God blesses your day and that he helps you to see the calling that is on your life. Lord, help us to be obedient to what you've called us to do. Help us to walk in our day side by side with you and link with your power instead of trying to do it on our own. We know we cannot do this on our own, although we try. Please continue to help us and continue to lead us and guide us. We love you so much in Jesus's holy name. Amen. Have a blessed day. Thanks for being here. Oh, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Taryn Sarconi so that you can grow with me and you can learn how to get out of the valley, how to stay out of the valley and exactly what to do to have the best life ever in 2022.